Hi, I'm Dr. Patty Barch, a traditional naturopath and the founder and owner of Naturally Unbridled Wellness in Onalaska, Wisconsin. Today's talk is a poop talk. We're going to be talking about constipation, specifically in kiddos, but also a lot of what I'll cover today is pertinent for constipated adults. So I want to give you some really important tips and strategies because this is a type of thing that we are constantly dealing with here in the office. And there are a few simple things that you can do to support the body in proper elimination. And I'm gonna go over these things. So first of all, what is constipation? So in all of my initial consultations, I always ask people about their digestion, any heartburn, belching, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, gas, etc. And um, most people will say that they're not constipated, but I learned many years ago to dig deeper. And so I'll ask, so you're having formed comfortable bowel movements every day, once or twice a day. And they're like, oh no. And then they'll tell me like that they might have a bowel movement every other day or just on Saturdays. And way back when, before I got on my wellness journey, full disclosure, I was a once a week pooper. Um, I had no idea that you could actually poop twice in the same day when you didn't have a stomach bug. So I've obviously I've learned a ton about digestion and how to optimize digestion. And fundamentally, it's a very important thing for your body to be able to do to function properly. Your, di your colon is one of your primary pathways of elimination. And if you're not getting rid of, rid of that waste in the proper time, then you can actually start to recycle some of those toxins. And over time, you get really inflamed and, and super toxic. So people will tell me, that they don't poop for days and then they have a massive blowout. Well, that's the body just going into red alert purge mode because of increasing toxicity over time. So constipation is not just grunting and straining to have a bowel movement. Yes, that is definitely part of, of a form of constipation if you're grunting and straining, but not moving your bowels completely every day is um, is not good. So basically what you should do is what what's in the toilet should represent the amount of food that you've eaten within the past 24 hours. So first of all, I am always floored by how many people never look, look at their poop. Um, it's really important to look at it. Um, color, texture, form are all indicators of how healthy your bowel is and certainly odor. So there's normal um, bowel stink, like we're all used to normal poop smelling, but then there's something called foul bowel, I named it. Um, and foul bowel is when you have the kind of um, room clearing gas, like you don't even wanna be in there yourself and then your family hates you. So um, there's all kinds of things that can go wrong with the digestive system, but basically within 24 hours, you should eliminate what's left over of the food that you ate the day before. <clears throat> so, one little experiment you can do to evaluate what's called transit time is to um, swallow like a tablespoon of sesame seeds or um, <clears throat> sunflower seeds and, and watch and see how long it takes for you to um, see it in the toilet. Obviously corn will work for this too. Um, and do not do this if you have diverticulosis or diverticulitis, you definitely don't wanna do that experiment. Um, and of course, you know, I'll do my whole disclaimer at the end that uh, always consult your medical provider. But you can um, get an idea of your transit time by um, doing that little experiment. Very often when I refer people for chiropractic, if they get an x-ray done, the chiropractor will let me know or let them know that the colon is completely completely impacted with stool. And that is a recipe for colon cancer over time because the cells of your colon are marinating in toxic waste. So the ideal bowel movement is smooth and swift. And I always liken it to the Play-Doh Fun Factory. <laughs> um, so it should basically just be this long, um, like snake-like um, stool. It should not be a pile of mush. It sh should not be floaty cornflakes. It should not be hard logs that are difficult to pass, little um, rabbit 
plops, little rabbit turds, pellets, right? All, all of those are signs of imbalance. You want to have that long, smooth, um, formed bowel movement. Now, the number one thing that I tell parents who are telling me that their their poor child is like excruciatingly constipated is get off the string cheese and goldfish crackers okay diet is super important and those things are really constipating and they cause a lot of like thick muck in the digestive system that is difficult to pass what makes an ideal bowel movement is fiber and water and the fiber works like a sponge to attract the water so those really hard stools that are difficult to pass uh, or rabbit pellets um, like really hard logs those are uh, insufficient fiber and insufficient hydration and those are the two easiest things um, to help rectify oh, no pun intended um, the constipation so you really have to focus on the kids diet they're eating way too many um, starchy carbohydrates like crackers and chips and cookies and cake and then a, a lot of dairy which can be constipating as well and they are very often not getting enough fiber. So high fiber foods like, um, and I know you're going to tell me your kids won't eat this, but you got to work on it. Um, high fiber foods like beans and lentils, um, winter squash. Um, I think one of the best things you can do is get um, organic dried apricots. Um, a little kid maybe can would do fine with one or two a day for a good fiber source. Um, you don't want the ones that are bright orange. Those have sulfites added. Um, you want to get the ones that are really ugly brown ones and um, have the kids eat those. Raisins are a good source of fiber. You can just Google high fiber foods. Um, but they've got to be hydrated and they've got to have good fiber. Another thing I tell parents, when you've got that little kid that doesn't poop every day, when they do poop, they're getting, they're squatting behind the couch and they're pooping in their pants and it's, they're doing a giant log that you can't believe that giant log came out of that tiny butt. And um, the reason why they're doing that is their physiology. So I, I defy you to go um, sit somewhere where your legs are dangling and try to poop it's really difficult to do. So um, there's something called the Squatty Potty and you, they have great videos on YouTubes that show you that the natural pooping position is actually in a squat where your knees are up above your hips. So we try to, we poop in a chair, which is dumb. Um, I know there are places in Asia and stuff that you literally, they have little holes in the floor that you squat in and that's actually a natural pooping position. But how we can manage that with our modern toilets is to um, get a stool, like a squatty potty, and get the knees up above the hips. And that actually changes the musculature of the pelvic floor to help um, the colon to be able to empty the rectum. So that's really important, physiology. So sometimes you have to bring back the potty chair, and I know that's the last thing you wanna do, and you work so hard to potty train because you don't wanna deal with that anymore, but um, it's really difficult to poop in a chair, and it's really difficult to poop with your legs dangling down. Just a few things about Miralax, which I despise. Um, Miralax is not a nutrient. Um, it is an irritant to the digestive tract, and um, they'll put it. They'll put little babies on this. They'll tell you they can take it every day, um, and it's literally just a whack-a-mole approach to it, an imbalance. Um, if you do an internet search for um, polyethylene glycol, which is what Miralax is, and the antimicrobial effects of polyethylene glycol, you'll see that it does have antimicrobial effects. And that's a bad thing because you actually have more bacteria cells in your digestive tract than you have human cells in your whole body. And that if you keep consuming an antimicrobial um, product, you're going to get imbalances in the gut and you're going to perpetuate this problem. And then those bacteria are really important for things like synthesis of neurotransmitters, B vitamins, um, conversion of thyroid hormone to its active form, really important. Other things you can uh, do, so natural things, um, Epsom salts. So if, if you're giving your kid a bath, you can put Epsom salts in the water. Epsom salts is a form of magnesium and it can be absorbed through the skin. So before you put them to bed at night, you um, give them their bath, put Epsom salts in the water, the magnesium is absorbed, and that magnesium will actually attract 
water to the colon and it's that magnesium is calming to the nervous system so it should actually help them to sleep better so that's a win-win for parents um, so Epsom salts uh, can be a great solution another great solution is magnesium citrate um, it comes in a in a powder it comes in all sorts of forms but the powder is a good one you can just mix it up taste like lemonade and have the the kid drink it you can mix it in applesauce which by the way has high fiber you if if they're willing to eat that you could actually put some chia seeds or ground flax seeds in there for even more fiber really all sorts of solutions um, another thing that can be helpful is uh, probiotics. And we have chewable probiotics and powdered probiotics that are really easy to dose to children. Those are the healthy bacteria that help you break down your food into its component nutrients and help you to have healthy microbes in your gut and have proper excretion. Of course, we have herbal and homeopathic remedies that support elimination as well. But two other things that we refer out for are chiropractic care. So um, uh, chiropractors will all tell you that when they adjust your baby, you'll be changing that diaper before they leave, before you get in the car, because um, it is extremely common for a constipated baby to get an adjustment and for them to just fill their diaper right away. So chiropractic is really important. And then another thing that can be really helpful is um, pediatric pelvic floor physical therapy. And we refer to O'Brien Physical Therapy for this. Um, there are other physical therapists in town uh, that are um, you know, trained in this, but we really love the people at O'Brien Physical Therapy. They are really great experts in a lot of things, but really pelvic floor for all kinds of constipation and other types of issues. But they do have a pediatric pelvic floor specialist um, on staff who really can be helpful for pediatric constipation. So those are just a few things about constipation and the types of things you can do. If you have questions or you would like some product info sheets and pricing, please um, go to naturallyunbridled.com and um, go to the contact us page and put the information in there. We'll send you whatever you need and we do ship um, through the continental United States. Um, if you like the information in this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Um, to the channel and feel free to um, leave a comment below. So happy pooping.